Welcome to the Develop Yourself podcast, where we teach you everything you need to land your first job as a software developer by learning to develop yourself, your skills, your network, and more. I'm Brian, your host. So I don't think most of you actually need another course on how to code or to get better and better at coding right now. I think most people actually lack is an effective LinkedIn strategy in order to get that first job. I see this happen way too often where somebody either goes to a coding boot camp, they learn to code, and then they think, cool, I'm done. Or they go on the job market, they realize they're not getting interviews, and instead of working on getting more interviews, they work on just getting better and better at coding, which is not what you should be doing. Most people suck at LinkedIn, and I wanna share a strategy to effectively network and grow your presence on LinkedIn, even if you're shy, even if you think it's cringe, and even if you do not want to become an influencer. Buckle up. I'm actually going to turn this into a course that I'm going to give away for free to Parsity students and make available for a price for non-Parsity students because I think this is actually really valuable stuff, and I see so many people that are just failing at doing this in the right way. And so I've used this exact same strategy to help others get hired. I've gone from zero to over 20,000 followers. I've landed a business deal for getting Parsity through my LinkedIn strategy, contracts for other types of work. I've started my own business on the side through it. I've met a lot of great people. I've just done so much more than I ever would have imagined from using LinkedIn in a good way. And it's I don't want to make it sound like over the top here, but it's beyond whatever I imagined. I never thought I'd be like a LinkedIn influencer. I even got part of the LinkedIn Content Creator Accelerator program where they paid me money to write on LinkedIn, which was wild too. R- remember, b- before all this, I was just a quiet, shy engineer. I didn't, I wasn't like the guy in the group chatting all the time or sharing on social media a lot. I've always enjoyed writing, but I've never really enjoyed being like the center of attention. And that's changed. I actually really do enjoy it now as an engineering manager. I enjoy talking and speaking to different groups of people, but that was never really my intention. But learning how to network effectively and use LinkedIn effectively has helped me tremendously. And I've seen it help so many other people. And unfortunately, too many of you are focusing solely on your technical skills when you can't even land an interview. So let's change that. And before any of the strategies I'm gonna share with you can work, you'll need to do a little bit of groundwork. So before we can get into the nitty gritty here, you need to do a couple things to your LinkedIn profile, which I'm gonna share here. You need to get 500 connections. And that might be a magical number. Maybe it's a really daunting number for you. I started off with less than, I don't know, with nothing. I I got on LinkedIn in my 30s, my early 30s, when I first started learning to code because I thought that's where jobs are. Now it's become such a vital thing to have nowadays. If you don't have it, it's like a huge red flag. So getting to 500 connections is not as hard as you think. LinkedIn will display the exact number of connections up to 500. Once you surpass 500, it just shows 500 plus connections. This creates a perception that you are well-connected, that you're influential. It conveys to others that you're a seasoned professional with a wide network, increasing your credibility. It's social proof. Not only that, it will help connect you to everyone else in the LinkedIn ecosystem, which is really important. Your first, second, third party connections, these are the people that are gonna reach out to you to give you jobs. If you have on the opposite spectrum, two connections, you are missing a ton of opportunities because how can recruiters that know your cousin in Alabama that you are now connected to them through a third party connection? They won't even see you in their feed. You're essentially invisible which you don't want to be, obviously. You want to be very visible. Having 500 connections is the easiest way to be visible. In fact, most sales companies, I believe, require you to have 500 connections before you can even get on and start selling because they know how important that number is. You need to understand that it is important. It's not some vanity metric. It's just something to give you that additional credibility and to connect you with the rest of the LinkedIn ecosystem. So now that I've sold you on getting to this magic number, you got to actually do it. So here's how you're going to do it. You're going to pick three to five influencers in the tech space, because I'm assuming if you're listening to this, you want to get into tech. If use this advice for whatever other industry you may be in, this is not only for tech people. This could work for anybody, and I've seen it work for many people. So pick three to five influencers, preferably ones that are software engineers and not just influencers. Why is that? Because you want jobs to come in ideally from this. You want to connect with people that are in the industry that you want to work in, not influencers selling you a course People like me, maybe even that are on there trying to promote stuff. Hey, I love when people follow me and I hope I give out really good information on there. So if you do what I put out there, follow me. But honestly, if I was junior, 
I might follow people that are more like engineering managers. Wait, that's me too. But yeah, you should follow me. Take back what I said. Anyway, you should follow a few people out there in the space that are actually working in the space and that write on a semi-regular basis. Now, what I want you to do is go through their top posts on LinkedIn. I want you to connect with as many people in the comments section that makes sense. It's not weird to connect with random people on LinkedIn. It's not a dating site. It's not Instagram, Snapchat, tickety talk. None of that stuff. You can connect with people without knowing them at all. I know like less than 5% of my followers in real life. My own mom doesn't even know that I'm pretty damn famous on LinkedIn. Nobody does. They don't care. <laughs> I just follow people that I have some sort of connection with on a business or like interest level. And I've made some great personal connections off there, but I'm like being LinkedIn famous is, it's funny. It's a weird conundrum. It's like nobody really knows or cares. So you're like famous on this platform that like none of your family or friends are ever on. Anyway, that's the sad part about being LinkedIn famous, but you don't care about that because you're just trying to get a job. So anyway, pick people, follow their posts, look at the comments, Pick the people in the comment section that make sense to you that aren't jerks and follow them as well. That will help expand your network really quickly and get you to that magical 500 connection. Next, you need to optimize your profile. So get a headshot that doesn't suck. You can use AI for this now. There's all sorts of cool tools to make you look decent on camera. I, I don't think you should go out and pay anybody. You can use like an iPhone camera. You can do something that's just like your head. Having a blank profile pic is like a big kind of red flag. You just, why give people more reasons to not want to talk to you? Maybe also, here's some weird hot tip. Maybe don't use a suit. This is tech. People in tech are not typically suit and tie types. And this may sound weird, but my overall philosophy is I want you to decrease the area for bias, meaning I want to generally fit in. The goal here is to get hired, not to be an influencer. If that is your goal, then ignore what I just said. But I really want you to win. So I don't want you to go out there and, and say, I want to show off my true self. And maybe I like to wear a huge top hat and a pink bow tie on top of that and a pacifier. Just stay away from that for now. If you want to get hired more easily, if you say that's a non-negotiable, you got to do what makes sense to you. This is just my advice. This is what I've seen work for me. So now next to your profile name, add the top three to five technologies you're using. Do not include HTML, CSS, or APIs or something really general like that. For example, for me, I would add TypeScript, React, Node.js. This section is searchable, so you don't want to waste it. By the way, if you were in Parsity, I would suggest you add like Node, Express, Mongo, React, Next.js, which I think is a really cool, more hot technology that less people know right now. So now you're at the About section. You have your profile pic. You have a decent technologies in your bio right there, the little top profile section here. In your about section, I want you to avoid this particular phrase, passionate developer, or anything mentioning aspiring, junior, recent grad. Nobody wants to take a chance on you. So I want you to start off strong. I don't want you to say, hey, I'm a new grad, passionate developer looking for my first chance. Please hire. That's not going to come off strong and strike confidence in a recruiter. Remember, the recruiters looking at this generally don't have a tech background. So they're not looking to take a chance on anybody because they are paid by the people that they get into these positions. So start off like this, maybe. I'm a full stack software engineer with an emphasis in JavaScript who loves making blazing fast websites using a range of technologies, including X, Y, and Z, right? No one's really going to look here anyways, so don't overthink it. But generally you want to come off like, hey, I'm a great candidate. You're going to want to hire me. Here's exactly why you're going to want to hire me. Your first job on your profile, on your LinkedIn profile, is where things get a little bit tricky. Let's say you're working as an auto mechanic or something like that. Or let's say you're working as a lawyer, whatever. You have some experience in a completely different and likely unrelated field. So you don't have experience, so no one will hire you. And you need experience to get hired. You've seen that meme, right? Where it's like, no one will hire me because I don't have experience, but no, no one will give me experience because I can't get hired and I can't figure it out. You're going to have to make some experience when there is, one, is none. And this is the hardest part, right? So you're going to need to make a site for a family member, a friend, a small business. Do it for free. Pick somebody that you say, hey, I'll build a website for you. I'll do it for free. I'll even deploy it for you. I want you to buy the domain so it looks not janky. So it's not like sitting at Heroku dot whatever dot com. Have it an actual .com, which costs about 15 bucks. 
If you go on AWS Route 53, you can look up all sorts of domains, buy one, put it out there, cost like 15, 20 bucks maybe. Not a bad deal. Have them pay for that. You build it, put it out there, boom, done. Have them write you a recommendation as payment. Say, hey, you can pay me by giving me a recommendation in public on LinkedIn. That is great validation. Now you can use this experience as the first item in your work history. And if possible, find ways to techify your previous experience. So for example, did you do anything with a database at your previous job, a content management system like WordPress maybe, or Wix even, or any type of web technology? Emphasize that and maybe remove the rest. For example, me, like I had a pretty shady life before I got into tech. And I basically didn't have any job history for most of my 20s because I was doing the kind of job that you cannot put on LinkedIn. So when people said they met me and they said, obviously, this kid's not this guy's not fresh out of college. He's he's an adult man with children and stuff. What were you doing before you got into tech? And I said, I was doing this job, but it was it's my my previous work experience is completely irrelevant. So I didn't want to add it on there. Mostly that worked. No one really ever pushed me further about that. And it'd be weird if people do. There's many reasons why you might not work. Could be family, could be personal, could be maybe you were incarcerated. I don't know. I don't think it's important, though, to give out information where it doesn't need to be given out. So I like to always focus on the present and what I'm doing now and what my goals are now, not what I did five years ago or 10 years ago. What does that matter? Especially if you're going for a junior position, it's already understood that you don't have the necessary experience, most likely. You're not going for a senior position. You're going for likely junior maybe even a mid-level position. So you say, well, my other experience isn't quite relevant, but here's what I've been doing lately. I've been doing this freelance work. Again, you point back to that first job on your profile that is that site that you built for somebody. Okay, so now your profile doesn't completely suck. You need to make some iterations on this, of course. There's gonna be things you gotta change up. Some things are gonna work, some things aren't. That's up to you to go back and identify these places. Now it is time to network. My favorite part. So everyone and their mother is telling you as a software developer to do two things on LinkedIn. They're saying, learn in public. Then they're saying, network. And they're not wrong. These strategies have been proven to work when it comes to landing new roles. I networked, in quotes, my way to my current role. I saw the CTO on LinkedIn and I slid in his DMs. And then guess what? I also applied and I got for an interview and the interview is still the same exact interview they give to everybody else. But did it help me get in? I don't know, maybe, sure, why not? I have got referrals for Airbnb and Google. And one time I got to Airbnb, even after they rejected when they first looked at my resume, I got auto-rejected for missing years of experience qualification. And then a buddy of mine that was there actually got me into the hiring manager's view. And I was ultimately invited to interview. So networking definitely can work. It can help you bypass these awful applicant tracking systems or just all the process and red tape that's around there. It can definitely cut you to the front of the line. And from there, you still have to pass the exams. But most people aren't even getting to the point where they're getting a technical exam or an interview. They're suffering and in silence and not even getting that far. So yeah, networking is really important. Unfortunately, a lot of gurus on LinkedIn, they'll tell you like what to do. Like you need to network, but not how. So at least people doing this awful thing where they DM strangers and just ask for favors, which is wild. You wouldn't believe how many people are in my inbox that are just asking questions to me about, look at my resume. And I've never spoken with them in real life or even online ever. I think it's okay if you reach out to someone and say, hey, that's a great post. you wrote. I really resonated with that. What you said was really cool. Hey, I listened to the podcast. I'd love to get five to 10 minutes of your time. I'm always happy for the most part to answer that. But when somebody slides in my inbox and says, I'm looking for a new job, here's my resume. What am I doing wrong? I'm like, dude, that's a lot to ask of me right now. We don't even know each other. That's a kind of weird thing to ask. So networking is basically just making friends online. But a lot of you aren't making friends. You're just putting like forgettable comments under a post. Like, I agree. Or you're creeping into some guy's DM that just said that, that maybe he doesn't know you. You're not offering any value and you're perhaps not making the kind of posts that will capture attention. So luckily, these are all very fixable issues. And I'm going to give you some tips on how to stand out, write better posts, and actually create relationships through LinkedIn. So here is step by step how we're going to do this. Step one, comment as a strategy. So maybe you're a little shy and you don't feel like posting it. I think that's totally fine. 
In fact, I think most people will not learn in public. That is completely fine. I don't believe most of us are meant to share all of our experiences online. I just know that's not the reality. Most people are too shy. It doesn't really flow naturally for them. So instead, those same accounts that you picked out from the original step to follow and then get their comments from, get the commenters from and connect with those commenters, those same people, I want you to turn on the notification bell for when they post. For example, Danny Thompson, he's a huge influencer in the tech space. He posts quite a lot. When that person posts, I want you to be one of the first people with a valuable comment. Bad example would be, I agree. He writes, coding is tough, but it's worth it. I agree. Not so great example. Why is that not a so great example? It's forgettable. It doesn't add to the conversation. Not so bad example would be, hey, that's really funny. I was just dealing with the same issue on an app that I'm working on currently. That's a really good approach you suggested. I think I'll try that out. Here's a link to this in case anyone else wants to check it out. That could be useful. Be very careful putting links though in other people's comments because that can be seen as you're trying to use their audience. So in general, I might not add a link to something, but I would just add to the conversation by saying, by commenting on what they said, how you either agree or maybe don't agree or even ask a polite question in a useful way. So if you're one of the first comments on these high traffic posts and it stands out, it can actually lead to connection requests from other people. And sometimes even gets to engagement with the original poster, which is a huge credibility boost for you. So if Danny Thompson, for example, responds or somebody else in the tech ecosystem that's an influencer responds to it, that can give you a big boost right there. Also, it opens the door for DMing, which is step two. Your first DM should never ask for anything. I've already told you what my DMs are filled with. And I'm sorry if you're one of the people that sent me that and I ignored you. I truly don't mean to. I have literally a hundred DMs at some days and I'm just, I'm overwhelmed and I, and I try to respond to them when I can. And I, I know I must've missed some people, but my least favorite ones are the ones when people immediately ask me for a favor that I've never met. So instead of doing that, the best ones I've received, the ones I really, is when somebody DMs me a relevant article that I might find interesting. Maybe it's a free course. I spoke to a young woman maybe a year or two ago and she sent me a course in a webinar on like TikTok. And I thought that was really cool because we had talked about that on the phone. And she said, I know you talked about this on the phone and here's a course that I thought you might be interested in. I thought that was super cool. And she and I kept in contact for a while and she ended up getting hired and is doing really great. I hope she is. She was a very smart young woman. Anyway, so if they respond to your DM, you say, hey, I got something cool for you here. Here's something I thought you might be interested in. If they respond, keep your conversation short and polite. They probably have a lot of DMs if they're at all popular on LinkedIn. And they'll inevitably say, thanks. And you follow up with like, very welcome. I thought you might like, you know, this because of your post on whatever. Have a good one. And now the next time you slide into the DMs about hearing about a job at their company, it's a whole lot easier to ask if they have time to set up a quick chat to learn about it. So these are seeds you're planting. And you're not doing it just for using people or, oh yeah, I can't wait till this person posts a, a job, then I'm going to get them. This is genuine interaction. You, you see somebody, you like what they've written. You slide in their DM saying, hey, here's something I think you might like. And then later on, if opportunity presents itself, which it may, then you can go in their DMs again. And now it's way less weird, right? Because now you're not just some random person. You're like, oh, that's the person that's always under my comments talking and they've given me some cool stuff. I like this person. I do want to give them an opportunity here. Way better. Step three, if you do want to learn in public, which I think is a great thing to do. And generally, when you're doing something that most people aren't doing, you're going to stand out. So step three is write posts that people actually read. People are interested in code for sure, but they are infinitely more interested in the person behind the code. So when you're learning in public, you think an image of your portfolio and then asking for feedback is going to get some engagement. And it certainly can't, usually in the form of criticism, because everybody has an opinion. Maybe it also just sucks and you don't really want people looking at it. Your first portfolio project as a developer is not going to be a work of art, most likely. And here's the other problem. We are all so judgmental. And especially on an online platform, you can look at something. You say, I would have done it like this. I've been writing code for almost a decade. Well, I've seen a lot of portfolios. I've written a lot of code. I may have a much higher standard for what I expect you to be, you to be able to do. I don't know if it's always the best idea to show off, here's my portfolio, break it apart from. You're going to get so many differing opinions. And all of us are 
in some way wrong, right? Because we have no clue maybe about your exact situation or the types of roles you're exactly going for or what you're trying to show through this portfolio. So I think a way better way is to add your story of your journey as a developer. So instead of waiting for your portfolio to be done, document the actual journey towards the portfolio. Like for example, Redux doesn't actually suck. Today I incorporated Redux into an app I'm working on. I know I'm supposed to hate it, but I actually found it fun. Here's what I learned. Thing one, thing two, thing three. I'm curious, how do you like using Redux? And have you found any better alternatives? The most important thing when you post is that first sentence. And if you want my templates for writing posts that I see work fairly well, just reach out to me. My contact information is on the parsity.io website. And if you're part of Parsity, and if you get this course I'm going to link out to in the future that I'm going to create in the future, you will get access to a list of templates that I see do fairly well online. But that first sentence is really important. Readers have their attention spans completely borked from scrolling and trolling all day long. So you want to start off with maybe a controversial statement, maybe a quote from a famous developer, something to just get people to stop real quick and say, huh, so Redux doesn't actually suck. And they're thinking, I hate Redux. What does this person mean? And then you go further into it. Now you're right, you're not writing anything controversial here at all. It's actually just sharing your opinion and your opinion is not wrong. So I would stay away from things like Redux is actually the best thing ever because it does this. That opens up the kind of engagement that I don't think is positive or good, but saying, here's something I learned. No one can say that's not right. No, it is right. It's something I learned about how I feel about a certain technology. So write simply, use a fifth grade reading level in general. Don't try to use two big words. No one wants to read a whole article on LinkedIn. We're here to scroll and to troll. Use white spaces between the statements and use lists when possible. And last, ask for advice. People love offering their suggestions for whatever library came out this week. This leads to more genuine connections with readers and makes your DMs even easier to slide into. I really hope that's helpful for you. And I think if you follow this general pattern of doing commenting as a strategy, getting DMs where you're offering things, and then writing posts where people will actually read them a few times a week, you're going to go way further than the majority of people that are on LinkedIn that have zero strategy and just aren't doing anything. Now, a little bit more about writing posts and generating content on LinkedIn as a strategy for networking. The way that you're going to grow on LinkedIn, if that's your goal, is to be consistent. I've very rarely ever had a viral post. I think I've had one viral type of post, which was, it was a bit divisive. I wrote something I don't regret at all, but I wrote about an interview I did years and years ago with a developer with seven years of experience that was actually really junior. Like he couldn't explain a for loop. He couldn't write map, filter, or reduce. This person had seven years of experience, and I felt bad for him because I didn't give him the kind of feedback that I know would have really helped him by saying, I think you need to focus on X, Y, Z concepts in JavaScript, and that's going to make you a really better and more hireable developer. I wrote this small piece about it, and people just ripped it apart. Said, what? If he has seven years experience and can't write it, he could just look it up. And I'm like, I totally disagree. Anyway, the point of that was to say, besides that one viral piece, which is actually not something I'd want to go viral, I've gained a ton of followers by just being consistent. And being consistent is the name of the game, whether you're learning to code or working out or trying to achieve some sort of fame on LinkedIn or whatever, just be consistent. So if you are going to learn in public, don't do it like five days in a row and then take off the, a month. You need to do it every other day. I like to write Monday through Friday on LinkedIn. And if you look at my history, I was really active when I was first growing my audience. Now I've let off the gas a little bit. I write maybe three times a week. I think three times a week is a real nice sweet spot because then you can feel like you're not pressured to write every single day and you can see what works and what doesn't. So you have enough content where you're saying, okay, this tends to work. This tends to not work. Also, I don't just wake up and write something every day. I write most of what I'm going to write on a Sunday. That way, during the week, I put all my ideas on a piece of paper, I write out a little bit of them, and then I put them in during the week. And the ideas I come up with are always when I'm working out. So when I go to the gym, I'll have my phone with me, or I'm taking a walk, or doing whatever, you know, maybe you get out the shower, maybe before you go to sleep, your brain's on fire, and you have all these ideas running through your head. I'll just speak into my phone, like, Alexa, 
remind me to write a post on X, Y, and Z on, on why you should be using LinkedIn, for example. And then I'll flesh that out into a post and I'll collect all these ideas through the week during my exercise routine or whatever. And then on Sunday, I'll write them all out. And then boom, during the week, I put them out. Way less pressure. And that way you feel like you have some sort of consistent pipeline for your ideas. So you're not just like waking up in the morning. Oh, what do I write today? What do I write? So this is the way that you grow on LinkedIn in a predictable way. Now, don't look for likes and shares and stuff. These are terrible metrics if you're trying to get hired. These are good metrics if you're an influencer, maybe. But if you're trying to get hired, who cares who liked your post? Or actually don't care how many you like likes you get, but who did your post is actually fairly important. If people like your post that you're interested in connecting with or that may be hiring at the same time, slide in that person's DM saying, hey, I noticed you've liked a few of my posts. I'm really uh, flattered or however you want to phrase that and say, hey, is there any chance we could meet for maybe 15 minutes to discuss your role at your company? and and maybe give me a little advice on my own job search at the time, and then take that with a grain of salt. Everybody's gonna have a ton of different information or suggestions, and some people are just gonna straight up ignore you, and that's okay too. But that will help you at least to get the ball rolling and making actual genuine connections online, and you will be surprised how many of these connections can bubble up into something very real and tangible if you do it often enough. Whatever you do, be consistent, don't quit. If you want my templates, reach out, Good luck out there. See you on LinkedIn. That'll do it for today's episode of the Develop Yourself podcast. To learn more about becoming a software engineer with us, then check out Parsity.io. If you're not quite ready for that, then jump into our dev30.xyz program, which is 30 days of working on your mindset, habits, and JavaScript skills. Totally worth it. See you next week.